All right, so this will be just a short video where I showcase uh, two scripting uh, things that I've done. It's a terminal you can write inputs into and change different things in the level, and a fuse box which you can power on and power off uh, certain things in the level. So this level uh, starts with you running up an elevator and you find a door that is locked leading into the station. So you need to find a way to unlock this door. Uh, here we have another door with no light on it and we can open this door if we want to and come inside and here we have a terminal which also seems to be powered off and uh, inside here we have a fuse box it's lit up so uh, the player can like pick up certain notes that will help them uh, here in the journal they can see uh, yeah, different different things that will help them. Not very important right now, but uh, the thing we need to do is turn on the power. So, this is one of the things that I scripted. You can just, you know, click uh, left click and you sort of enter the fuse box mode. And right click and you exit it. So I'm going to enter it again. And then uh, I made this model myself, by the way, uh, in Maya. Um, so here we have like two different places we can click. If I click down here, uh, we'll, we'll like enter this area where I can like click a bunch of buttons and use for fun. Uh, we have some text. I can pick up this breaker, for example, to add it to my inventory. If I right click, it's gonna zoom back out, and I can click here now, and yeah, you can pretty much go between these modes in any way you like. Um, so we have a, a red light here indicating that the power is not on and then we can zoom in here we have different uh, uh, labels for the different breakers uh, which go to different things so I'm gonna start by just turning on the power and see what happens the light turns green you get a bit of a sound we can now exit and the lights are now on because we turned on the power and the breaker for the lights was plugged in. We did, however, also enable power for this door. And you can see the name of the door here, entrance 5512, which means that we can no longer open this door now uh, because it has power and it's locked. So let's go back. Actually, let me just pick this thing up. Um, mm -mm. Let's go. And then let's go in here again, let's turn off the power, and then let's try removing this breaker for that door, and let's uh, instead add one for the terminal and one for the door outside. And just to, to showcase this, um, the lights are currently, oh wait, they're not on. If I turn on the power you'll notice that the, the emergency light turns off because, you know, the normal lighting is on. Uh, but if I were to turn off the power, remove the breaker for the lights, turn on the power, you'll notice that the lights are not on. So, this, is, this system is like, you know, interconnected with, with uh, everything, pretty much. Anyway, turn back on the lights, because I like to see what I'm doing. So, <clears throat> now we have power for the terminal. We don't have power for this door, which means we can yet again open it. And we have power for this door. But it still won't open, because it's locked. So it has power, but it's still locked. So how do we unlock it? Well, there's this is where the different journal pieces come in that I've placed around the, the room. But the next show piece is this terminal that I've built, uh, which the player can then you know, enter inputs into and get different results, uh, much like a real computer. Uh, so we have a note here that says uh, to unlock a door, you need its ID. You can find this ID written on the door frame. Uh, but you know, if you want to open this entrance door that we're trying to get open, it's very easy because its ID is just entrance zero zero zero. So use this command to open it: unlock door ID entrance zero zero zero. So we click here, we get this interface, and now I can just 
type whatever I want into this thing. It's not you have a limit of I'm not sure how much actually, but there is a limit. Um, and if I just type any nonsense, it's just gonna say it's not a recognized internal or external command. Pretty much stole this from uh, uh, CMD. Uh, but it also says type help for a list of commands. So you can do that. You type help. And we get a list of commands. So uh, here we have then uh, clear. You can just clear the screen. Uh, help to show this list. We have floor plan. If you want to see the floor plans of the uh, level. Log out. Log in. I also show examples of how you write these commands. We have unlock, and then we have you know what you want to unlock, and then we have an example here, example for how we want to unlock a door. Uh, we have if you want to you know just lock something again, uh, and those are pretty much the commands I have currently. And you can just scroll up and down with the mouse wheel here if you want to find. Uh, well, let's just type clear for now. Let's just type to clear the screen. So the command we saw before was uh, if we wanted to unlock the door, because the door has power, but it's still locked. So if we want to unlock the door, we type unlock. Uh, oh, let's see if I remember this command now. Door, because we want to unlock something, and we want to unlock a door. And what ID does this door have? So we add a ID flag, and the ID was entrance 0000. zero, zero, zero. So if I type this, it says error. User guest has insufficient privileges to unlock door entrance. Zero, zero, zero. So we wrote the right command to unlock the door. The problem is that we're logged in currently as a guest, and it makes sense that the guest doesn't have the privileges to unlock a door into the facility. So this is uh, like a military facility uh, with some pretty lax security still, but yeah, at least some security. Um, so in order to like have the right privileges, we need to like log in to the right uh, account. Um, and this is where, where, where I added this journal thing that shows this as well. So if you want to log in, you type login, and then a flag for username. So you, you type dash u, and then the username, then dash p, and then the password. And then I just have some... Uh, I think I have some, some use, uh, text here um, describing that, you know, some some user uh, some user's uh, password is just password. And he should change it, you know, before he gets mad or whatever. Um, uh, but but for for the video's sake, I'm just gonna show this. That they have a list of usernames here. We have um, this guy, uh, and he's a security intern. He didn't change his password from password, and his username is AP37. So what we do then is that we enter this area here and we type login. And then dash u for username. The username was ap37. And then we have the password, which was password. And it says user ap37 successfully logged in. And you can also notice that um, the text to the left of what I'm typing, which says c user ap37, you know, it now says the username I'm logged into instead of guest, which it was, you know, previously. Uh, so now that we have uh, this user login, we should have the privileges to open the entrance. I also added a, a nice feature that you can just uh, tap the up and down arrow keys in order to uh, find previous commands. So you can see here the things that I've been you can just you know go through all the commands I've, I've written so far. Uh, so we can just go back to this command instead of having to write it out uh, again. So unlock door ID entrance here says here. And now it says unlocking door entrance 000. We exit, we go outside, and we can see that the door, the bar is now green and the door is unlocked. Here we go. Very nice. It should work if I also type lock door ID entrance 000. Now it says locking door. So now if we go outside, it's red, and the door does not open. So that's the uh, system I built. It's you can do pretty much anything you want with it, but uh, so far I connected it mostly to like lights and, and doors and stuff like that to get cool info. And then if you type, for example, uh, log out, uh, the user is gonna log out, and you're back to being a guest. And 
then let's see here. Um, the other thing I could show, I suppose, is the floor plans, which uh, uh, I found like uh, out how you can like add images to the system as well. Uh, so let's see. Let me just clear this and let's type. I think it was floor plan and then a flag for what what floor I want to show, and then I just added a one. So show me floor one, and it's gonna like throw up a picture. It says like, yeah, here's floor one. Here you can see a bunch of stuff and displaying floor plan, uh, which is could be neat, you know, just being able to or like if you wanna, uh, this is not a floor plan. I just use those numbers anyway. But uh, if you wanna like, let's say, enter one of these computers and find out some information, you can just add like different images. So here's like, a, oh, test subject, blah blah, or I think I have some, more. yeah, just you know, for fun, for uh, for creating something cool. So, um, yeah, that's the terminal. Uh, these things are like very interconnected, so uh, I could also just go in here, turn off the power, go back out again, and now the terminal doesn't have power, so you can't use it. So it's very like interconnected, and uh, even if I can just unscrew the power for a terminal, it's not gonna turn on all the stuff. Uh, same with the door outside, so it's a very like flexible system. You can do pretty much anything you want with it. Honestly, um, it's very easy to connect to other blueprints. Uh, so yeah.